somebody worship the Lord. Come on, this is a good moment to step out by faith. This is a good moment right here to do something that you feel to do in the Holy Ghost. If you feel to jump, if you feel to dance, if you feel to run, you ought to just let loose in the Holy Ghost right now. You ought to let God know you are great and greatly to be praised. I will bless the Lord at all times. Somebody worship. As we sing this again, I think you ought to just step out from your seat and you ought to move in the Holy Ghost. I feel a shadow break in the Holy Ghost. of God's power is about to break forth in this service right now. Amen. I'll just tell you what I feel in my spirit. I was struggling a little bit thinking I have got all these different things. My problem is never do I have something to preach. It's what do I choose to preach. I got too much to say. I've always got too much to say. You got to shut me down, you know, throw a wet blanket over me sometimes because I always got too much to say. And I'm going through everything a little bit ago before the service. I'm thinking, God, this is good. This is good. This is, they're all good because it's all the word of God. I'm thinking, God, what, what, what do you want me to preach? And, and right as the service was beginning, I felt like the Lord spoke to me and said, don't go up there in your flesh. Go up there in my spirit. Try, stop trying to find something in your flesh to, to impress them with and speak what my spirit spirit is saying to the church and I said okay God what is the spirit saying to the church and I felt the Holy Ghost say to me my miracles are about to pour out all over this congregation healing and deliverance recovering of sight to the blind I 
feel the miraculous power of the Holy Ghost wanting to break forth in this service right now. I don't feel like this is really a big issue here at this church, but it is an issue everywhere else I go. There is a spirit of fear that wants to keep us out of the miraculous power of God. You know why? Because the Bible says in James chapter 5, it says, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed when it said there it is james 5 16 confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed faults is not just your failures and your sins it is your infirmities your sickness your pain in your body because it speaks of healing that if we will tell somebody i've got this problem in my life this sickness in my body and then you pray for one another you will be healed the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much I've said this here before I believe but I've told you about the spirit of fear and that the spirit of fear the spirit of Satan doesn't care what you're afraid of as long as you're afraid and I believe that he has realized that the apostolic people you're not afraid of me anymore You've realized greater is he that's in you than, than me that's in the world. So the spirit of fear says, I don't care what you're afraid of as long as you're afraid of something. So since you're not afraid of me anymore, I'll make you afraid of each other. And now you can't obey this verse because we're afraid of each other. Hello? We're afraid of what's going on and I'm not trying to discourage anybody in what you're going through. But there is a spirit of fear that's trying to take advantage of the season that we're in right now. I don't believe for one second that Satan is in control or Satan is in charge of anything. Satan didn't create a virus. Satan hasn't created a pandemic. Satan hasn't created nothing. The only thing that he's done is he's taken advantage of the season that he was given just like we're in we are at god's mercy of his sovereignty and so is satan and so just like the church is supposed to do satan is trying to take advantage of the current season and climate that we're in right now and so he has seen an opportunity he has seen an open door to usher in an abundance of fear to divide us from each other because he knows the power of unity. If I can keep them six feet apart, if I can keep them at home watching online, and I'm not against watching online, I've had to do it some myself. But if I can keep them there and keep them isolated and keep them divided, he knows that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. He knows that a house divided against itself cannot stand. So if I can put fear in them, they cannot obey James 5, 16 that says, tell somebody, hey, brother, come here. Man, my knee is hurting and I need you to pray for me. I'm confessing my sickness, my faults. I'm confessing my pain. I need you to pray for me. And the Bible says, pray for one another that you may be healed. And in just a moment, we're going to pray and we're going to have an outpouring of miracles take place in this service. We were talking around the table at lunch and story after story after testimony after testimony was coming to our minds. As one would tell one, we'd be reminded of another. And we were building each other's faith about things that had happened overseas and here in the States. And, and I said something along the lines of, I believe that this is the greatest opportunity of the church right now. Because what was the common denominator of all of our stories and testimonies overseas was poverty, desperate situations, desperate needs, dire circumstances. The common denominator of every story and testimony we shared about over in Africa and Asia and other countries around the world, third world places was their de desperate need. If God didn't heal them here, they were going to die. 
they didn't have medicines they didn't have doctors some of the places we've been life expectancy is 37 years old they don't have any other options their only option is Jesus I wonder what would happen if America's only option was Jesus and I believe in my spirit that God has allowed some things to happen you know the verses you know the Bible in 2nd Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 13 God says he basically says I'm in charge he says three things when I shut up the heavens and send forth no rain what does that mean he says when I stop the harvest from occurring when I shut up the heavens and send no rain that's an NLT that's fine too he says when I command the, he says when I send the locust to devour your field that means what that means when I take from you the harvest you used to have so he stops the new harvest from coming and he sends the locust to steal the harvest you used to have now you have nothing and then in here it says if I send pestilence among who the devil no if I send pe that word in the Hebrew literally translates to a fatal epidemic or disease and God says, if I send a pestilence among my people. So far, he's just said, he hasn't completed a sentence. He just said, if I do these three things. If I shut up the heavens and you don't have revival. You don't have people get the Holy Ghost. You don't have people getting saved. And if I allow a plague to divide the church and steal from you the flock, the, the, the harvest you used to have. And then on top of that, I send a pestilence to kill the people. He didn't finish his sentence. So semicolon there next verse says if my people which are called there's a very select group in this world that has been called by his name if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. There's no way we could count all the prophecies that have gone forth from this pulpit and out from these altars of prayer about Palm Bay in this region. I just stand here to echo those prophetic words that this land, this region, this city, these neighborhoods, our schools, our loved ones, they will receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They will be baptized in the name of Jesus. This city will be healed. This land will be healed God will do it I'm almost done and we're gonna pray but I remember I told them about being in Australia for the general conference two years ago this week or two years ago last week I think it was 2020 and it was when the, the nation was literally being ravaged by wildfires billions of animals thousands upon thousands of people killed and I'm sitting there thinking, this is crazy. What is going on? Why? And we're trying to have a general conference. The national, every church, every apostolic church in that nation is at under one roof trying to worship God while the nation is going down. I prayed and I prayed and I prayed because I thought, man, this isn't a time for just some little sermon. God, what are you doing? Show me, God, what you're doing. The Lord began to speak to me and say, while they see opposition, I have provided an opportunity. He said, because this is a nation where people walk around never questioning God, never thinking about God. They don't believe in God. They're atheist, at most agnostic. He said, but now that they have nothing left, now that their families are being killed and things are going down, now they're starting to look up and wonder, is there really a God? He said, I have allowed a circumstance to create in the imagination of man, the wondering of God, the question, is there really God? He said, this will be the greatest hour of the church. I feel that word for this church right now. 
I see empty seats that used to not be empty. There's people that have fallen away. We haven't kept everybody. We've lost some people. There's been some devastation. We had prayer today in this service tonight about people who are sick, people who are dying, and children having surgery, and it's, it's devastating. It is the best of times and the worst of times. It is, it is the two sides of the same coin, but I'm here to tell you that this will be the greatest hour of this church. I'll close with this and we're going to pray. But we know the story of the Israelites going out of Egypt after the 10 plagues. God had sent 10 plagues and the Israelites were confused, wondering what is going on. There's devastation all around us. And God opened the doors for them to walk out with great abundance, only to lead them in a roundabout way to the dead end of the Red Sea. You remember? They get to the Red Sea. They thought, what are we doing now? Maybe they were concerned, but they were terrified when they heard the footsteps of animals, of horses, the chariots beginning to come behind them, the Egyptian soldiers marching behind them. And now they begin to curse God. They begin to curse their leader, their pastor, their man of God in their life. They begin to curse everything that they were. They said, my goodness, it would have been better for us to die in Egypt, to live in Egypt than to die in, in this wilderness. They said, Moses, were there not enough graves in Egypt that you had to bring us out here to let us die? And in this moment of the story, it is spoken of David in Psalm 77, verse 16 through 19. And in Psalm 77, verse 16, put it up there if you get it. In Psalm 77, 16, the Bible says that David begins to write about this moment in time, which seemed to be, which seemed to be the devastation of the Israelites. And, and David said, when the Red Sea saw you, O oh God, you didn't realize your dead end had eyes, did you? When the Red Sea saw you, oh God, its waters looked and trembled. The sea quaked to its very depths. Now get this picture. You've got a church standing at what they think is the end of their situation, the end of their lives, the end of their nation, the end of their existence. They won't get to the promised land because they're stuck staring at the opposition facing them. They can't get through it. They physically, intellectually, they cannot do it. They don't have the resources to do it. The problem is too big for them. And they're standing there looking at the Red Sea and while they were staring at the Red Sea, David said the Red Sea was looking at God. Go to verse 19. Watch this. <laughs> this is amazing. He says, God, your road led through the sea. But why didn't your road lead over the sea or under the sea or around the sea? Why do you always have to go the hard way? Your road. What was that road? It was a miracle. It was dry ground in the middle of an ocean. It was the pathway to the miraculous. It was the pathway to the promised land. It was the pathway to the harvest. And he said, your road led where? Through the sea. Watch this. Your pathway through the mighty waters. Here it is. A pathway no one knew was there while they were sitting on the sidelines on the banks of the river saying there ain't no way out of this God said I've already made a way through this well, all they could see was the whales and the sharks and the alligators and everything else in the Red Sea ready to eat them alive. While all they could see were the waves ready to drown them. While all they could see was the army ready to kill them. God said, close your eyes of the flesh and open your eyes of faith and see that right through your greatest opposition, I have paved a path of the miraculous for you to walk. I got a word for East Wind Pentecostal Church. This will be the greatest hour of the church. 
I really know it. I believe it. And if you believe it, I want you to shout, yes! while you have been oppressed by staring at the diagnosis the diagnosis has been looking at your God saying I don't have a chance the x-ray you've been staring at has been staring at your God you've been laid off well that situation has been looking at your Jehovah Jireh your great and mighty provider while you've been looking at the situation of a world that's trying to silence the church that spirit of hell is looking at the God of the apostolic church I feel the miraculous of God wants to invade this service right now. Would you just take a moment and lift your hands and speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance? Would you pray in the Holy Ghost? The Lord wants to open your, your spiritual eyes of faith and reveal what God has already prepared. When there seems to be no way, God said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. I feel the gifts of the Spirit moving in this place. Somebody just reach for the gifts of the Spirit right now. I feel the gifts of the Spirit beginning to operate in this place. Uh, for just a few moments, if you feel of the Lord impressed to do something, uh, if you feel to give a word, if you feel to lay hands on somebody, I want you to go right now, right now without hesitation, uh, right now without fear. Uh, I want you to obey the gifts of the Spirit that are leading you uh, to operate in His power. Would you go right now for just a moment? speak a fresh wind of the Spirit of God I speak for the way maker to arise in your situation here is the power of the living God
I want you everybody just lift your hands right now and just minister to the Lord in his presence for just a moment I feel to do something in the Holy Ghost and we're gonna do it here in just a moment but I just want you to lift up your voice and praise the Lord uh, let the Lord inhabit the praises of this church right now Hallelujah. This is what we're going to do very quickly. This morning, I felt in my spirit there is a shift taking place. And, and I believe that because this church is so hungry, this church is so explosive, so volatile. It's amazing how just like this, they can just erupt. And, but what's happening right now in this church is there's more and more people saying, I don't just want to, I don't just want to get uh, saturated by the overflow. You ever been to like SeaWorld or something and they got that log ride and and you can either be on the ride going down the thing into the splashes you know and, or you can stand on the bridge you know I took little Levi he didn't know what was coming they told him he's too short to go on the ride so he's all sad and crying I said well let's just stand right here and watch the ride he had no idea probably kind of mean of me but and we just stood right there I said look here it comes get ready might want to hold on to this rail right here it's coming down just and it hits the bottom of that pool and the tidal wave just goes and literally just overflows i mean just overwhelms us and of course he starts crying you know he had no idea but what's happening in this church right now is that there's many people who have stood on the bridge for years and experience that tidal wave and you've been blessed by it who are now saying I think I'm tall enough to get on the ride I think I'm ready to get on the ride I think I'm at a place where I'm ready to experience it for myself so what's gonna start taking place pastor is there's gonna be moments like what we're about to do and what happened this morning where the tidal wave hits but then we got to slow things down for a second and give a little instruction to help those that want to get on the ride and want to be a part of it and you're going to see your leadership come to the pulpit just like this and say okay here's what we're going to do and we're going to pray like this and we're going to do it like this and this here's how we're going to do it because we're training up an army we believe to see a one million soul not just a one million soul harvest a one million soul army of the lord to see this global harvest so there's times there we got to take some time just for a second and say okay this is what we're going to do because this is a a training moment right here so this is what we're going to do right now if you need a miracle tonight or you want god to reveal the miraculous in your life if you need a miracle right now if tonight in this service you felt the lord ministering to you say man this is my service i've been needing something from the lord i need a miracle right now whatever it is healing in your body deliverance in your mind direction in a situation you need a a radical miracle you need an answer to prayer right now i want you to raise your hand i need an answer from god right now hallelujah if your hand is raised i want you to come to this altar very quickly and line up shoulder to shoulder and leave a space between you and the platform for altar workers to be able to get in front of you to move in front of you i want you to come and stand shoulder to shoulder if you need a miracle in your body in your home in your situation on the job you just need an answer to prayer right now leave space between you and the altar hallelujah I want the rest. I see some of our young ladies. We're, uh, we got any young men in this service? We got young ladies. I need some young men filled with the Holy Ghost baptized in Jesus' name. I want y'all to come around and start filling up this gap right here and stand. Position yourself. If you're a lady, stand in front of a lady. If you're a man, stand in front of another man. And We're going to pray in just a moment. I don't want anybody praying just yet. We're going to pray in a moment in Jesus' name hallelujah can you put james 5 and 16 back on the screen it says confess your faults one to another and pray 
one for another. Now we've got more people that need prayer than we've got those ready to pray for. That's all right. It's going to work out here. If we have anybody else, I, I just called out the young. Hey, if we got anybody that feels young or wants to be young, that's fine. I want you to come down and stand in front of them right now. Come stand right, at, right now and stand in front of them. It's your time to step out by faith and say, I'm still young. Come on. I see a few. If you're Holy Ghost filled, baptized in Jesus' name, I want you to come get ready. Get ready to pray for these in the altar. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So this is what we're going to do. The only time that the problem is going to be spoken is when the person in front of you tells them what their need is. That's the only time the problem will be spoken. We will not speak the negative anymore after that moment. Even when we begin to pray, if they said, I've got back pain, you're not even going to say, oh God, can you please heal their back pain? You're going to speak the answer. You're going to speak the solution, which is your back is healed now. There's no more pain in your back right now. And even a better way to do that is to say, I speak healing by the name of Jesus into your back right now. Whatever their need is, and you don't have to go into all the details. If there's a need in the home or in the family, you can just simply say, I need God to give my family direction. I need an answer for God in my marriage. You don't have to go into details. And when you begin to pray for that person, you say, I speak deliverance in your home. I speak direction into your marriage. I speak for God to give clarity and peace into your family. These altar workers in just a moment, man with men and women with women, they're going to come in just a moment when we release them to do so. And your hands are going to be raised and they're going to lay your hand. We're going to lay our hand right on their head right here. And all you're going to do is just begin to speak the answer by faith. Okay? So if you're partnered with someone, I know there's more. We're outnumbered here. But if you're partnered with someone, I want you to tell that prayer warrior in front of you, I want you to tell them, this is my need. I want you to confess that need to them right now. I want you to tell them, this is what I need from God right now. This is the miracle I want to receive tonight. We're not praying yet. We're just confessing our need right now. We've got a couple of men right here. I've called for the, some of the praise team. Just tell them exactly what your miracle is that you're going to receive. This is the miracle I need. This is the miracle I need. Amen. 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 I'm going to have you, Pastor, pray the prayer of faith in just a moment. Amen. Pastor's going to lead us in prayer. Now, this is what we're going to do. Don't ever allow this instruction to become old to you. Let it be a reminder, a refresher, if you've already heard this. And also, remember that there's, there's fresh, fresh converts, babies in the Lord, children in the Lord who need to receive this. So you can encourage them, hey, listen, this is going to work. This is how we do this. And this is how God's going to operate. Amen. So in just a moment, pastor's going to come pray for us. He's going to release the word of faith, the prayer of faith, through the power of the name of Jesus. That's where miracles flow, through the faith in the name of Jesus. None of you, none of you have the power, not me, nobody has the power to perform a miracle. But you are a vessel of his spirit that he's going to flow through. Amen. By your faith, God is going to flow through you. And so, those people that are here seeking this miracle, in just a moment when I tell you to, we're going to lift up our hands as a sign of faith and surrender to the Lord. You know, a lot of times we throw up our hands and we don't even know what we're doing, you know. 
Sometimes we think, you know, I'm surrendering, but we also need to have that expectation like a child. I want to receive you, Father. I want to receive your spirit. I want to receive your touch, God. I'm reaching for you, Lord. We position ourselves upward. Hebrews, uh, Hebrews chapter 12, it says to look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. That's why we're going to look up. Jesus said, he said to lift up your head and look up for your redemption draweth nigh. So in just a moment, we're going to posture ourselves upward towards the Lord. We're going to begin to worship God. You don't have to tell anybody else about your need. God already knows. But we confessed it so that we can target. We've got the bullseye on the target of what we know we're going to pray for and what God's going to do. It's not going to be some vague, mysterious prayer. It's going to be a very targeted, strategic, specific prayer of clarity. God, here's the need. Now heal it right now in Jesus' name. That's how these altar workers are going to pray, okay? Very specific prayers. I don't want vain repetition or ramblings. We're going to speak very specific prayers. And when you speak those words of faith, you can begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. That's where the Spirit begins to pray through you. You can begin to pray in the Holy Ghost for them. And altar workers, here's something very, very specific. I want you to keep your eyes open and I want you to, to pray with your eyes open looking at them talk about the discerning of spirits a lot of times the discerning this discernment comes through what we see you can see sometimes you can see if someone's being analytical in their mind trying to analyze their way into a miracle and you can stop them and say don't think about it get rid of your turn your brain off for a second and operate in faith keep your eyes open because you'll see sometimes exactly what they need to do sometimes they'll just be standing there and maybe they're they're intimidated to open their mouth and pray and you because your eyes are open looking at them you can tell them open your mouth and praise god open your mouth and uh, mouth and worship god sometimes with your eyes open you can see those things you can see intimidation or fear you can see those things and because you're looking at them and you're praying for them now you know okay this is what they're doing wrong I'm gonna tell them what to do right you can tell them hey lift up your voice out loud and praise don't be intimidated don't be afraid you can see those things just by watching them as you're praying for them amen amen awesome 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 amen has everybody confessed your need one to another is there anybody that hasn't done that yet? We want to make sure we obey the scripture. We have specified exactly what our need is. Amen. In just a moment, I'm going to hand the microphone to pastor. When pastor releases the prayer of faith, it's very, very important that those of you who are seeking a miracle, that you don't beg God to do anything. That what you do is you worship God. The Bible speaks of not complaining about anything, but praying for everything. You know, praising God. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. The Bible says God inhabits the praises of his people. Giving thanks to God. Amen. We talked about that gift this morning. What we do here, you know, at least with those with Southern hospitality, when someone gives us a gift, we say thank you. That's, that's praise. Thank you for giving me this gift. So I don't want anybody, when pastor releases the prayer of faith, to beg God, to ask God. He already knows. We're going to begin to praise God. Remember, I said this the other night, if you were here. We're not trying to persuade God to heal us. The Bible says that by His stripes we were healed. So what we have to do is position ourselves through praise where His healing is already pouring out. So we're going to praise God to position ourselves. And when pastor releases this prayer of faith, all I want those seekers to do is to begin to worship God with the words of praise. You can shout hallelujah. You can shout I love you Jesus. You can shout thank you God. Whatever words of praise that you feel to shout. That's all I want you to shout. And when the prayer work, uh, the altar worker begins to lay their hand upon you, you will feel the power of God's spirit. And many of you, if not all of you, won't even be able to speak those words of praise anymore. All you're going to be able to do is speak in tongues as the spirit of God gives the utterance and I got a, a very easy question to ask you where do you think healing is it's in his spirit where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty 
So when we are speaking in tongues, as the Spirit gives the utterance, that's where the healing is. And so we believe that as God, as I begin to feel your spirit move upon me, fill me up, and I'm speaking in tongues, I believe that there's healing power in your spirit. There is delivering power in your spirit. There is direction, the answer I need in your spirit. So as I'm speaking in tongues, I will declare that this is my healing. This is my miracle. This is my direction. This is my answer that I've been praying for. Amen. So I want only those right now who are seeking a miracle. I want you to lift up your hands. Don't pray yet. I want you to lift up your hands. What I want you to do for just a moment, this is a little bit different, but I want you to lift up your head. I want you to close your eyes. And for just a moment, by faith, I want you to envision the Lord giving you that miracle that you have made confession of that you need right now. I want you to envision that miracle coming to you, that healing in your neck, your shoulders, your back, that miracle in your mind, that miracle in your family. I want you to envision that for a moment. To the altar workers, you're only going to begin laying hands upon them when pastor releases the word of faith. And when that takes place, miracles will happen instantaneously. Keep your hands lifted. Keep your heads lifted. Keep your eyes closed. Keep Get ready for the miracle of God. Pastor, it's yours. By the authority of the word of God. And by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And by the power of the name of Jesus. I receive my miracle. In Jesus' name! In Jesus' name! I receive it! I receive it! Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Jesus! You never stop, you never stop.
you to send forth uh, an apostolic shout of worship unto God. Come on, link up with your brother and sister. There is a breakthrough in the atmosphere. The prophecies of old are coming forth now. The prophecies of old are coming forth now. The seeds of prophecy are bringing forth life and fruit. It is happening now. It is springing forth now. Let's just, yeah, let's just wait a second. Come on, somebody just worship the Lord together. I feel something breaking in the atmosphere in this place. I feel a witness in my spirit right now that something is springing forth in this place. In 2 Corinthians 6 and 2, it says, At just the right time, I heard you. At just the right time, I heard you. He says, Behold, now is that time. Now is the day of salvation. Pastor Myers, I feel that prophecies of old are springing forth right now. Uh, things that we have prayed for, things that we have tarried for, things that we have fasted for, in my spirit the Lord is saying now, 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 now. Grab somebody by the hand and shout now, 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 now. now. Now! Now you will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Now your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Now the harvest shall spring forth. Go after it. Go after it for just a moment. Go after it for just a moment. Grab somebody. Link up with somebody. And go after it with force, with faith. Yeah. 